I'm here today to do my June reading wrap up. How many books did I read and what did I think of all of them? Let's find out. Hello book friends, I'm Jen and welcome to my reading life. And I'm here today to do my June reading wrap up. How are we already halfway through the year? Is everybody saying that in their June wrap up videos? Probably. <laughs> I feel like the first half of this year has just flown by. But here we are at the middle point of the year and my reading life is actually going really well this year. I'm very happy with the amount of books I have read that I have really, really enjoyed. And really that's all I can ask out of my reading life is to read lots of books that I love. This month, I think I read quite a few books that I really enjoyed. I read a few that were just fine. And uh, then I read, well, I didn't read. I DNF'd one, <laughs> which I just decided wasn't for me. But let us just dive right into all of the books. I decided for this month that I would categorize all of the books so that I could talk about them um, for the different challenges and things that I read them for. Or if I just read them just because, we'll talk about those. And if I, they were for buddy reads or book club, I figured I would just kind of group all of the books together so I could talk about them and hopefully not forget to mention any of the challenges or things that I read all these different books for because there were a few <laughs> and I feel like every video I forget to mention something and you know I think that's just what happens when you're 50 is you forget stuff and I probably should write this stuff down before I film but we're just gonna fly by the seat of our pants <laughs> okay the first group of books that I want to talk about are the books that I read for Sue Jackson's Big Book Summer Challenge. And this is my first year participating and I have already read three books that qualify for Big Book Summer. So I am in it to win it. <laughs> the first book I read for Big Book Summer was The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. And this is one of the books that all of you guys voted on for me to read in June and I read it. So thank Thank you guys so much for picking this. I really, really enjoyed this. I actually ended up listening to it on audio, which I highly recommend. A few of you uh, reached out to me when I said, is this good on audio? And said, yes, it was. And you were not wrong. It is read by a cast. So there are, I think, four or five different voice actors reading the story because the story is told from multiple viewpoints and having the different narrators really helped keep me focused while I was listening to the audiobook. I think it could have been easy to get lost in who was speaking and which section you were in if they hadn't done that. So I really did appreciate that. And in this, we follow four boys, uh, two brothers, and then two other boys. Um, the oldest brother has just been released from a sort of juvenile um, prison where he has been uh, for the past few years but his father has passed away and he's been given early release so he goes home to his brother um, and unbeknownst to him two of the other boys who were at the prison who did not get released uh, stowed away in the trunk of the warden's car and are now um, with the two brothers and you follow what happens to all four of the boys I thought this was gonna be all of them kind of like going in a road trip on a car but it's a little more complex than that and I I think Immortals just does a great job with character development and making you really love his characters and I really did get invested in all of the boys' stories. I will say that the ending, I wanted a little bit more from the ending. I'm not gonna say any more than that. The ending wasn't disappointing, but there was just, there was just a little something more that I think I wanted and I didn't get. Um, so this wasn't a perfect read for me, but I really, really enjoyed it. I thought the ride to get to the end was fantastic. And um, yes, so I definitely recommend this one. And if you've read it, can we talk about the ending? Because I feel like I need to talk about it with someone. So let me know if you've read this. <laughs> then the next book I read that qualifies for Big Book Summer is Someone at a Distance by Dorothy Whipple. And I buddy read this with my friend Elizabeth uh, over on Instagram. And 
This is my very first Dorothy Whipple and actually was Elizabeth's last Dorothy Whipple novel to read. And so that was kind of fun that I was reading my first and she was reading her last. And I'm so, so glad that I read this. It was fantastic. This is basically the story of uh, marriage and what happens when a, another person um, comes between that relationship. And it's just about this family and the repercussions of all of this and what happens. And Dorothy Whipple is such an engaging writer. I mean, I was completely drawn into this story and I was invested in the family, um, particularly Ellen, the wife. Um, Ellen is my middle name and I'm always drawn to characters whose name is Ellen because it's not that common of a name. And so I immediately was like, yes, I'm rooting for Ellen. <laughs> I know that's kind of silly, but you know, these are just the things that make me happy when I'm reading. And so I was immediately invested in her story and um, what happens to her and I was rooting for her the whole way. Um, and I just think, I think this was, I'm hoping a really good Whipple for me to start with. And I really can't wait to read more of her. I have high wages sitting on my shelf, but if you've read Dorothy Whipple, tell me what else of hers I should also read and add to my TBR because I want to read more, more, more. Probably everything she's written because I love this so much. And I think this is going to become a new favorite. It's one of those books that I don't think I will soon forget. And I think that's some of the highest praise I can give to a book is that I won't forget it because I forget a lot of what I read. <laughs> and then the last book I read that qualified for Big Book Summer was probably my favorite read of June, and that was Looking Forward by Marsha Willett. And this is the first book in the Chadwick family series. And I'm planning to read books two and three um, in July and then in August. And in this, we follow the uh, Chadwick children who their parents and their eldest brother have been killed in Kenya, and they are sent back to England to live with their grandmother. And the grandmother has a couple of people who will work and live with her. Um, and it's just all about the family and the children, and it spans decades of their lives and it was just so wonderful if you love Rosamond Pilcher this is absolutely a book you should read um, if you enjoy family sagas and I really cannot wait to move on to uh, books two and three and I do want to thank my friend Michael who is in the Cozy Reader Book Club because he really talked up these books and I've read other Marsha Willits and enjoyed them um, but this one is definitely my new favorite of hers so I cannot recommend this enough and it's definitely you're going to see this on my favorite books of the year for sure. <laughs> okay, so that is it for big book summer books. And the next category of books I'm going to talk about are the books that I read for the TBR 24 in 24 challenge. I am trucking right along and feeling very good about where I am this year so far. Um, so the first book I think I will talk about is the one I DNF'd because um, I, I don't have much to say about it. And that is Baking Cakes in Kigali by Gail Perkin. And I was really hoping that this was gonna be lovely, but I started to read it and something about the writing style just felt like it was keeping me at a distance from what she was writing about. And I just, I couldn't connect with the characters. And it's written, I believe, that sort of each chapter is like a little vignette about this woman who makes these cakes and um, these, these people, like the people that come to get the cakes kind of tell her their stories. And I, I just, I couldn't get invested and I have been worrying about getting into my summer reading slump again this year because that seems to keep happening to me and I really didn't want that to happen. So I decided just to Put this one down so i decided actually to swap it out for another book that was on my tb not on my tbr 24 and 24 but was on my tbr shelves that has been sitting there for quite a few years um and i will talk about that book in my july wrap-up because i just finished it yesterday so 
that will replace this one, which I have removed from my TBR 24 and 24. And I will probably pass this one along to a little free library because Maybe somebody else will love it, but it just wasn't for me. And then the next book that I read for TBR 24 in 24 was The Queen and I by Sue Townsend. This book, you guys, I'm so glad I read this in June. It was just so funny. Sue Townsend is just hilarious. I, that's really all I can say. It's this is definitely farcical. It is what would happen if, um, I think it's the like Republicans or, yes, I think it's the Republicans come into power and um, they basically kick the royals out of the palace and um, basically put them on the dole. And so they have to live in like subsidized housing um, and, you know, they are dealing with sort of all of the issues that um, people in England in the lower classes who have to deal with sort of their version of like, you know, social, social security, social services, welfare, kind of all of that stuff. They're dealing with all of that. And it's just kind of interesting to see who rises to the occasion and who doesn't. And this takes place back when Prince Charles and Princess Diana were still married and the boys, um, Harry and William were very young still. So it was very nostalgic in that way. Um, so I think reading this now was probably a really good time because I think there's been enough sort of distance uh, between the events when Charles and Diana were married and now that you can just kind of look back at that and kind of chuckle at the way Sue Townsend um, pokes a little fun at the royal family. But while she pokes fun at them, I think she does it in a way, it's not nasty the way she's doing it. Like the, she flushes them out enough to make them seem real and you know, you're invested in what's going on with them. And I thought this was just such a fun ride from start to finish. So if you've read anything else by Sue Townsend and enjoyed it, definitely try The Queen and I. If you like the royal family or just kind of, you know, fascinated by how they live their lives, also give this a try. <laughs> it was really fun. And then the third book that I read for TBR 24 in 24 uh, was continuing my uh, love of all things Edith Wharton, and that is The House of Mirth. And I buddy read this with, again, my friend Elizabeth and also my friend Susan. And we have kind of started our own little uh, sort of a gilded age, as Susan called it that, gilded age reading club, where we've mostly been reading Edith Wharton up until now, but I think we're going to maybe try some Henry. James, which I've only read a couple of his shorter things. So we'll see how I get along with some of his other books. And yes, yeah, so I really enjoyed The House of Mirth. And I'd say buddy reading Edith Wharton is the way to go because she's so complex and there is so much to uh, take away from her novels. I think reading classics with other people and talking about them is a really wonderful way to enrich the reading experience. If you don't know The House of Mirth, it is the story of Lily Bart, and she is a 29-year-old woman, unmarried. Uh, she is pretty much alone in the world. Her parents have both died. Uh, she has an aunt that she sort of goes to when she has nowhere else to go, um, but she is sort of living on the edge a little bit where she really needs to get married to somebody wealthy in order to keep living her life in the way that she has grown accustomed. And yet she's not really willing to compromise herself and marry someone that she doesn't love. So she doesn't really want to marry somebody that she loves that doesn't have any money, but she doesn't want to marry anybody who has money that she doesn't really love. So she's sort of caught in this place where what, what does she do? What is going to happen to Lily? And we follow all of her ups and downs and huh, this book was a ride. Um, and I will have to say that the ending was a surprise to me um, and it was so great to discuss it with Elizabeth and Susan and really kind of help work through how I felt about the ending. 
it continues my love of Edith Wharton and I can't wait to keep going with her and reading more and more and more. Moving on, I think the next books I will talk about are a couple more buddy reads and our book club book for June. Um, so the first buddy read that I have is Rose Cottage by Mary Stewart. This was a reread for me. I think this was my third or maybe my fourth time reading this one. Um, you all know by now that I adore Mary Stewart. This is one of her sort of more cozier, slightly more domestic novels, less of the romantic suspense uh, that she is most famous for in some of her other novels. Um, but in Rose Cottage, we follow Kate Herrick and she has come back to her childhood home at the request of her grandmother uh, to get some personal belongings. And when she gets there, she finds that those items are missing and they were hidden in a wall safe and that wall safe has been opened and the things are gone. And so she sort of starts off on this quest to find out what, what has happened and who has taken them. And this has a really delightful twist to it. And I, I, I do say that I think the ending of this kind of wraps itself up a little bit quickly for me. And the denouement is maybe, um, could have been teased out just a little bit more. You can definitely tell that Mary Stewart wrote this. This was one of her later books that she wrote. Uh, and you can definitely tell that. Um, but I still find this just really cozy. I love all of the descriptions of Rose Cottage uh, and the surrounding area. And um, yes, I'm sure I will read this again and again because when you just want something cozy, you want to go to an English village and just read a really lovely story, I definitely recommend Rose Cottage. So it was fun to reread this. And then the next buddy read I had, again, <laughs> my friend Elizabeth and I, we just can't seem to stop buddy reading. Um, and so we actually did quite a few in June. And the first one we did was actually Latchkey Ladies by Marjorie Grant. And Elizabeth so kindly gifted me this copy of this book. She um, had purchased two copies of it and she asked me if I wanted one. And I said, well, that would be lovely. And so then we decided to buddy read this together. And this book was it was unexpected. It was a little bit uneven in its writing. Um, it follows a few latchkey ladies, um, which are basically the ladies that sort of lived on their own and worked during World War One. And it's sort of right at the tail end of World War One and right following World War One. Um, and we mostly follow Anne Carey. She is our main character. Uh, the back of my book is a little bit misleading and it makes it seem like there are four women who are sort of central to the story. Um, but that is not actually the case. I would say Anne is far and away our main character. We do learn about the other women mentioned, but they are definitely side characters. Um, and I think that's maybe what makes it a little bit uneven is that it starts out and um, Anne spends a lot of time in this kind of, it's like a boarding house, but you can pay just to kind of have your meals there. And so she and some friends, that's what they do. Um, so it's kind of all about the ladies at this boarding house and there's some older women, there's some younger women. And I was really kind of interested in that. And then the story shifts and it really focuses just on Anne. And it felt very much like almost two different novels and like uh, Marjorie Grant maybe wasn't sure at first where the story was going to focus. And then she decided to hone in on Anne and that happens well into the book. Um, but yes, so Elizabeth and I had lots and lots to talk about in this one. And we actually said it would be fun to wait a few years and read this one again. Now that we know what happens in it, because I think it might seriously change the reading experience because you didn't really know where this was going and a lot happens in it, a lot of very significant things. And I think knowing that ahead of time might change 
how I feel about this. So it was not a perfect read by any means, but really, really interesting and made for an excellent buddy read because there was just so much to talk about because it was such an interesting story um, with a lot of different things going on in it. <laughs> And then the last book was the Cozy Reader Book Club pick for June, and that was Hannah Coulter by Wendell Berry. And this was my first experience reading Wendell Berry, but it definitely won't be my last. And I have to thank my uh, co-book club runner, <laughs> Rebecca, for recommending this book. It was so beautiful, so poignant, just, ugh such a wonderful story of a woman's life. Uh, we basically, um, we are following Hannah Coulter. She is looking back on her life from the end of her life. So I think, you know, Rebecca said one of the things that made it cozy for her was that you sort of know at the beginning some of the things that are going to happen to Hannah over the course of her life. And that makes it easy to just like go along for the ride because there's nothing unexpected really that happens. Um, you just sort of get to see all those things flushed out over the course of her life. And I, I just thought Wendell Berry's writing was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think if you're a fan of somebody like Marilyn Robinson, that you would absolutely love Wendell Berry. Um, he's got very much that that, that kind of writing style, uh, a little bit lyrical, but really a good storyteller as well. Um, and I loved Hannah. I thought she was just a wonderful character. And again, this will be a book that I don't think I soon forget. I, I tabbed it up quite a bit while I was reading it. There were just so many wonderful quotes in here, and we had such a lovely discussion about it um, at our book club meeting in June. And if you're interested in joining the Cozy Reader Book Club, you can join at any time. Um, you can come to as many or as few meetings as you want, read as many or as few of the books as you want, and we'll be reading The Firebird by Susanna Kearsley for our July book, and we are meeting on Saturday, July 20th. So uh, reach out to me if you are interested in joining us for that. But definitely give Wendell Berry's Hannah Coulter a try. It's really lovely. And then the last category of books uh, to read are um, mostly books that I just read just because I wanted to read them. <laughs> um, but first, let's start with the next in the Lord Peter Whimsey series. As you know, I'm reading through all of the Lord Peter mystery novels this year. And next up was The Five Red Herrings. And okay, I have a confession to make about this book. I started it and I got to about the third chapter and I was having such a hard time with the Scottish dialect the way Sayers has written it in this book, which I think is very accurate to how a Scottish dialect sounds, but I could hardly make heads or tails of what people were saying. And so I thought, I'm going to try to track down the audiobook of this. You guys, there is like, there's no audiobook of this. <laughs> At least not that I could find. I looked everywhere that I could think of. Um, so, I mean, I would hope there's an audiobook out there somewhere, but I couldn't find it. But what I did find was the BBC Radio dramatization of Dorothy Sayers' books. So I was like, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to the dramatization and then I'm going to just kind of like skim through the book and see if I kind of missed anything essential. But I think the dramatization did a really good job of of pulling in the essentials of the story and I got so much more out of it by having it read to me so that I didn't have to think about like, what is she trying to say? Or what is this character trying to say? Because I was struggling. This isn't my favorite whimsy. In fact, this is probably going to go down as my least favorite because in addition to the Scottish dialects, when I got to the end and found out who done it, I sort of felt like, well, that was a very circuitous route we took to a very obvious ending because the person that I thought done it from the very start was the person who done it. So, um, there were a lot of characters to keep track of. 
They all seemed to be artists, which made it more confusing. And they all had Scottish names, which made it even more confusing. From the reviews that I've read of this, a lot of people feel the same way. And yes, so not my favorite of the Whimsy books, but glad I, I, I sort of made it through it. <laughs> then the next book that I read was Another Mystery and another one I listened to on audio. And that was An Assassination on the Agenda by T.E. Kinsey. And this is the next book in the Lady Hardcastle and Flo mystery series. And I have been waiting for this book to come out. <laughs> I love Lady Hardcastle, as I've already mentioned. I think these mysteries are they are exactly what I'm looking for when I want a cozy mystery. Like they're not too sweet, they're not too twee or anything like that, but they're not gruesome. Um, the murders are, you know, they happen off the page and they're, you know, if they're gruesome, there's not any details really told about them. Um, but in this one, uh, Lady Hardcastle and Flo are requested by Lady Hardcastle's brother who works for, I believe, MI6. Um, that there has been a murder, I forget in which city it happens in, um, but he wants them to go there and basically get in and kind of take over the investigation from the locals, even though they don't really have the authority to do that. Um, they sort of have this piece of paper that says, you know, we work for the government and you need to let us do what we want to do. But of course, the men in the local police do not want these ladies coming in and doing that. So they come up event they come up against a lot of opposition, um, but Lady Hardcastle and Flo have a way of just getting their way. <laughs> um, and I just love their relationship. Their friendship is so wonderful. And the mystery in this was really great. And you can kind of see the trajectory as we are heading up to World War I. So there were some mentions of uh, real life historical events that are going to be happening that are going to um, bring about the start of the world war so um, I can see that on the horizon so I'll be curious to see where the story takes us um, and if we continue on which I hope that we will T.E. Kinsey if you're watching this which you're not uh, please keep writing these books for as long as you possibly can because I love them <laughs> and then the next book that I read was the Summer Book by Tovi Jansen. And this was the second book that all of you guys voted on for me to read in June. And thank you so, so much for voting for this one because I just loved this. I can't believe this has sat on my shelf for so long and I haven't read it, but it was just delightful. The story of a grandmother and her granddaughter, and they are in Finland on these on this island in the Gulf of Finland, and it's just kind of about this summer there. Um, the grandmother is getting older, and the granddaughter is she's spunky, but she has a little bit of a temper on her, and they talk just about all kinds of different things, life and love and death and everything in between. And um, again, I think people often will describe this book as being quiet, and while it is quiet, I also think it's just such a lovely story of a relationship between um, an older person and a younger person. And I think that those stories um, and those relationships are so important to tell. And I just, I just loved it. And I actually want to read it again in an upcoming summer, um, just to take it in more because I think there is a lot to be gleaned from this one and I think it's going to take multiple readings to get everything out of it that I possibly can. So again, thank you guys for voting for this one. Uh, that was super fun. I need to do that again and have you guys vote on books for me to read. So maybe we'll do that again in August. And then the next book that I read was one that I read because my son asked me to read it. And that's the first time he's asked me to read a book. And the book he asked me to read was Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus by Dusty Bowling. This is a middle grade book. And I've been hearing a lot of booktubers and bookstagrammers um, talk about this, especially during middle grade March. A lot of people were reading this one. And I wasn't 100% sure about it, but my son asked 
actually got this book and he read it and it is about this young girl Avon and she was born without any arms and um, she has lived her whole life um, in I think somewhere like Tennessee or something like that her parents moved the family out to Arizona where they are going to be running a Western themed theme park <laughs> and Avon has to, um, you know, kind of start all over again, making friends and fitting in and, um, you know, that's difficult to do when you don't look like everybody else does. And this was just such a lovely heartwarming read and I was so glad that my son read it and then that he asked me to read it and we chatted about it afterwards, which was just so much fun um, to get kind of his take on what he took away from the story. and. Um, not not a 100% perfect book, but really just sweet and lovely. And then the last book to talk about that I read in June um, was the only library book that I read in June. And that was The Portrait by Antoine Lorraine. I have talked about The Red Notebook by Antoine Lorraine, which I absolutely love. It is a favorite of mine and I wanted to read more by him. Um, so many of you said, oh, I've read other books by him and love them. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to track some more down by him. And my library actually has a number of his books. And so I just put a few on hold and this was the first one that came in. And this is actually the first book that he wrote. And I believe he wrote this when he was still working for like an antiques dealer. And this is about a man who collects um, antiques. He sort of has these collections of things. And then he stumbles upon this portrait of a man from you know a few hundred years ago and he thinks it looks exactly like him and he sort of becomes obsessed with this portrait and he purchases it and then he ends up sort of going to try and track down who this person is and it um, changes his life and this is a very slim little novella I think I read this in like one day <laughs> um, and I will say it's not as good as The Red Notebook, but I still enjoyed it. It was very quirky. I mean, what happens in this book is very strange <laughs> um, in a very French way. Um, so if you do like um, books translated from the French, I would definitely say give this a try. Um, I mean, it's, it's so very short and I definitely think his writing has gotten stronger as it has gone along, if The Red Notebook is any indication. And um, so I'm looking forward to reading more by him. And um, somebody just left me a comment the other day that he has a new book out. I'm, I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, but I am definitely gonna check that one out for sure. So I am hoping to track down as many of his books as I can read, but I like the portrait. It wasn't like the best thing I read this month, but um, I'm, I'm not sorry I read it. So that's always good. And then the last challenge that I'm participating in this summer is Summer Book Bingo hosted by Tiffany over at Beautiful Minutia. And a number of these books fit onto my bingo board. And so I'm just going to put a little picture of it here so you guys can see how many squares I have filled in so far. I don't have any bingos as of yet, but I am getting close, slowly but surely making my way to some bingos, having such a good time. Thank you, Tiffany, for hosting that. And I think that is it for my June reading wrap up. Um, yes, so like I said, I read 13 books in June which um, I thought was going to be, I thought it was going to be less than that. Um, so kind of towards the end of the month, I wrapped up a bunch of books and I was really surprised that I got through as many as I did. Um, but yes, so a good start to my summer reading and I'm hoping that the rest of my summer keeps going on that same course and we do not hit another reading slump this year. So let me know, how was your June reading? Did you read anything wonderful this past month? Did you DNF anything? <laughs> Did you find a new favorite? Give me all the ins and outs of your June reading. You know I love to chat all things books with you down in the comments. And if you could give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed and would like to hear, why do I always say here?
C, if you would like to see more bookish content from me here on my booktube channel. <laughs> One of these days, I will get that right. I usually cut it out, but I'm going to leave it in this video so you guys can see how many mistakes that I make when I'm trying to film these. <laughs> anyway, yes, if you could like and subscribe, that would be great. Thank you again so, so much for watching. I love coming on here and talking books with you guys, and I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye!